first of all, I like the way Rich, Rich was talking about uh, feedlot manure. You look at it, and that's a bunch of poop. And he's talking about product and harvesting and all these positive things. That was one of the things I've looked at. So when we think about poultry litter, I'm moving to the southeast. There's kind of two motivations why we did this, and this is out of our extension program. First thing was value, economic value, and should the value of what we're dealing with kind of drive what we're doing with it? In, in this case, poultry manure. But the other thing is we had some other, we have other situations that are unique, South Carolina somewhat, South Southeast in general. And the first thing is permitting. Well, first of all, just for background, in South Carolina, every poultry farm has to have a permit. In fact, there's a, there's a uh, there's not a single, if basically you've got above uh, 30,000 pounds average production live weight, you have the same permit. And there's wet and dry. And so that's the only difference. So they all have to have them. And so when we look at the siding, the, the permitting, it's setbacks from waters of the state, it's neighbors, setbacks from neighbors. You gotta have a manure management plan, you gotta show a balance on fields, you gotta show, or brokering is allowed. It that's all has to be defined in the permits. Permit documents are usually notebooks about that thick, okay? And so in South Carolina and other states, it's become common to include land not controlled by the poultry producer in the permit. That's not necessarily a bad thing. And permits that list brokerage as the only manure management option have become common in our state over the last 15 years. Okay? And so we have something called a brokerage permit. One of the situations that was we knew existed was you have places where, especially if you co-locate livestock production with plant production, grains, you would like to encourage cooperation among growers. We were doing that in Minnesota when I was up here 24 years ago. Um, so we want to encourage that. But one of the things came to liability. We wanted a way to transfer liability. So we have growers to have a permit and the brokers, bro brokers have to have the same permit, go to the same classes, pass the same test, that kind of thing. And so the, that was an idea to encourage movement of litter in particular, because that's number one cash crop in the state of South Carolina right now is a chicken, and number two is a pine tree. And so we want to encourage movement to places where they could use the manure, and particularly phosphorus, okay? And so that was happening. And two tons per acre per year, pre-plant cotton. Actually, that's not enough, so these guys were because of the economics, we're limiting application and actually using all the nutrients in the rotations because we can double the crop a lot of years. So that was kind of working. So while barns were being permitted in this certain time frame and built, this seemed like a great idea, and fertilizer prices were on the increase. Okay? So we look at this chart. Basically, 2000 is when this was beginning. Okay, And you see this. This is just nitrogen. If you look at urea and anything, basically we're going up linearly by a factor of 2.6. And so everybody's, yeah, let's just have, let's put 16 barns on 40 acres and truck litter. And we have brokerage permits, we can do it. And then things went a little bit nutty. By the way, uh, phosphorus and potash prices also were going up. And so during this time, it was hard to find litter. I had a project where I was buying two semis a year and I had to truck it 20 miles even though I was surrounded by turkey farms because of the demand for litter. So the solution, solutions now create another problem and they, they're, they're feeling the bite right now. While barns were being built, everybody wants it. Long story, in 20, 50 mile trucking distances, sometimes more, we're not uncommon. Now we have people, 16 barns, brokers is the only option and who wants my stuff? Nobody because of fertilizer prices. So our objective for this, this project was, those are the two reasons, value, but you know, we've had this fluctuation. You've got to look at these fluctuations of time. You can't just assume an end price, peak price, or pay price, because they're all impacted by what? Oil. So we picked some peaks and valleys. We're using urea, because that's the most like litter. And we obviously, we're looking at uh, uh, superphosphates, potassium chloride is our, as other nutrient sources. Well, something we got to emphasize to our growers is they always say, well, I got such and such a price per ton on fertilizer. And they said, well, we've got to get that to the component nutrient we care about. And so we took data from the Economic Research Service and local data to get that. So we use the urea price for N, and then we use the plant available nitrogen 
estimate for the value of n in the, in the litter. And so here's, we did pick 2004, 08, 2010, 2012, and then we popped in some uh, fourth quarter 2016 numbers from the state. We're kind of riding up the, the linear portion, hitting some of the peaks and valleys, and just kind of looking at snapshots of those years. And you can see the prices in like <clears throat> 2010, here is 49 cents, a few years before it was 60 cents per pound of nitrogen. Notice uh, P205, 8.87 cents a pound in 2008. You know, people are getting surprised, you know, fuel prices affect phosphorus, why you mine it and you move it by truck. And so, very big uh, fluctuation there. And then here's the date, I'm not gonna go through all these, but we look for some, you can say typical, this is no, there's nothing typical in broiler litter anymore. They've changed the way they're doing their bedding, but broiler layer, no bedding. Turkey go out, similar to broiler, we just have a lot of turkeys. And then turkey brooder, which is unusual in that it's mostly bedding, very little manure, because they clean out after every flock. Okay? So that gives a wide range of manure products from poultry, if you will. To give you an idea on brokerage, the grower can receive anywhere from zero to 15. If I'm a brooder, I get zero. This is not worth much, okay? 10 is kind of typical, but even that, it just varies all over the state. And the brokers at that time, even right now, about 20 to $25 a ton to bring it, and another $5 a ton to spread it. So who spreads it becomes part of that. So for per ton, we're looking at uh, 20 to $30 a ton, and most people are contracting at two a ton, two tons an acre, so you're looking at about 50 to $60 per acre is what they were typically looking at. So, I took the prices, the composition of litter, and said, okay, what's full retail, what's the retail price of everything, MPK? In other words, as a complete fertilizer, assuming I can get all of this into some plant in my rotation. And these are the prices we got. And you can notice in 08 and 2010, 2012, they're pretty good. Let's point out a couple of things in particular. Layer manure, there's no bedding. It's 47% moisture, the basis of water is diluting it. You know, back in, 20, in, in 2004, they're not trucking that very far. $25.59 a ton roughly is what it's worth. We're back 28 and 79 in 2016. But you know, in the good years, people were wanting the layer manure, even though it's heavier, okay? The turkey brooder guys are always having a problem, but even in the good years, some people would take it a short distance. But it also has high C to N, and it basically immobilizes nitrogen, so that's its problem. So basically, if I have dilution with water, or dilution and bedding and not much manure, my litter's not worth that much, compared to broilers and turkeys. And so if we look at that time frame when, when prices were up, if I had broiler litter, $107 per ton was like, you know, if I look at the component pricing, that's technically what it's worth on national, you know, it was the national averages. So in that time, if I'm the, the guy who's the brokerage customer, I'm getting a heck of a deal. And that's why it's going on peaches, it's going on cotton, it's going on strawberries, believe it or not. Okay. And then 2016 happens and it's down again. Okay. So we're now just a little better maybe in some cases now. Actually, I'm going to show you something even more close, 2019 here in a minute, than we were. Now, so we have a, we use a phosphorus index in our state, for our, so it's not just soil test phosphorus, but it's a big concern. And basically, you get to a certain point, you have so much phosphorus in your soil, you don't need the phosphorus. It has no economic value. Our smarter brokerage customers are realizing that. And so if I pull out the value of phosphorus, and just say nitrogen and potash, all those red numbers is when brokerage is probably not a good idea. It's not going to move. You can see that really easy. And guess what, if it's nitrogen only, it's a loser. In fact, what's happening now, especially for pastures and hay ground, where they do the soil test, I do not need phosphorus, and I'm doing fine on potash, thank you. Uh, they're calling up the fertilizer company and the broker is not getting the business. That is currently where we're getting bit right now. So that's. The problem when you do brokerage, when you're far separated, you're separated quite a distance from people who are growing plants, whatever they might be, who could use your litter. That's kind of like, so if you're not doing that, don't do that. That's what, don't do what we did in the Southeast. It was a good idea, but 
Well, people do it in kind of dumb places, if you be frank with you. So let's wrap this to a typical four house farm, whatever that means. We go up to 16, 18 house farms now. These four houses, if you cleaned out all the litter every year, and that's an if, sometimes they go one and a half uh, years now, about 580 tons per year. And then we got the price, and I added January 2019, one of my agents who's working in that area gave me these prices. And you got the per ton value, but I want to look at those purple numbers. Back in 04, if I used that litter integrated in my own crop product, it could be pine trees. $22,672 that I'm basically giving away. When fertilizer was really high, what went, got high of what, $62,000? And right now it's around the $39,000, $40,000 range. So we're kind of going, okay, this idea of dis disintegrating crop production and poultry production actually is a loser. In fact, these numbers are important. Why? because they're on the order of magnitude of the net profit for the farm. And actually, the fertilizer value of the litter sometimes is equivalent to the net income for the poultry. It's like, whoa. That, we see them, some of that in swine, too. The other thing is, what contributes the most to litter value? We got it, all the little snapshots that we did. But if you notice, 2016, phosphorus is only 37%. The rest of the time, it's 46. Right now, it's 53%. Hmm. We complain about phosphorus, don't we? There's times it's the most valuable nutrient I have and the most easy to move manure I got. So instead of whining and crying, then maybe you should look at things where we actually get the value out of it. And so folks that are looking at alternatives in our state and can use it, in fact, you're not going to get it by brokerage because guess what? If I get 10 bucks, it's only 5,800 bucks a year. By the way, that does show up on their, their cash flow statements when they talk to the bank. But look what my losses are. 2019, on this size farm, I'm losing almost 34,000 a year of stuff I'm just giving away. I'm just giving it away. But right now, because of the current prices, the hassle of there, and I have this order from Southern States, they'll bring it out and apply it for them. So that's kind of where we are. But because of that value, because of this need, now we're starting to look at a need for things like composting, stuff like that. So right now, brokerage is still viable. Two tons per acre is still the most popular contract rate. If that rotation, and there's crop producers that can, because we can double crop, we, we use soybeans a lot, as scavengers of far, phosphorus, stuff like that. That can work if they're close enough. That this that whole business has become a big limiting factor. Integrated farms, I'll put that in green. It's like, that's so old school. The answer is, guess what? If you want to be sustainable, the little old school stuff works. A long time ago, when I first showed up at the University of Minnesota, Larry Jacobson, and we were planning stuff, he said, you know what? Before we hog, dairy, whatever we're working with, Plan where you go, do with the, what you're going to do with the manure for you plan in the parlor or the barns. You know, it's still this idea of integrating new plant, uh, animal nutrients with viable plant production, whatever it might be. It's still one of the best ways to get the most value of manure. And if you want to be sustainable, that's kind of one of the keys. So, but also they have, our producers are experiencing legal and economic risk. The litter's coming out by law. They're going to be inspected. They have a permit. It has to go somewhere. You said brokerage. It's not moving. What do you do? Now, all of a sudden, I don't want to think about composting. We go, well, we should look at composting or other things. So that's, we have parts of our state where that's driving. Other parts where they're co-located with crop production, like we don't care about composting. So that's kind of what's going on here. That phosphorus. That's where most of the value is. If we're talking about value in litter, we need to think about using phosphorus and quit treating it like a problem, I guess. There are rotations where you can. In fact, there was an example earlier in the day in one of the sessions. They said, hey, we're about balancing. Yes, that's not, that's not, you gotta sit down and design the system, if you will, even on a mass balance of nutrients. And you can get pretty darn, put it away close enough within the kind of variability we see in nutrient and soil data. 
The only producers that use litter, they produce on something they can grow on their farm that's of value are the ones that are really going to right now get the main value. Like we said, relying on the brokerage can be a problem, but again, if I'm sitting in the middle of row crop production, it could be fantastic. Oh, by the way, a lot of our poultry guys, if they're literally sitting in areas where irrigated grains, they become brokers as well. So they have two licenses. I got a, I got a permit to farm my houses and I got a permit to be the broker and I can get paid for my equipment by, by basically delivering my litter on contract to guys around me. Okay, that's, that still works. That still works just fine. So that's why I say don't rely on brokerage unless you're basically in the right location. And with that, my effort to try to make sure we stay on time. You're doing great. Any, I always okay. get nervous about talking too much. Anybody that knows me knows that's a good fear. <laughs> but, so. We have some time for questions. So. What do the brokers pay for the manure, the poultry litter? Zero, well right now, oh, zero to ten. Really? <laughs> zero to ten. Because it's just, you know, think about it. It's I'm coming out of my house. I don't have storage. I'm at your mercy if I'm the poultry guy. This has got to go away. It says, you know, if I'm using it on my own land, I may have storage. I may have a shed, I may put a tarp over it. There's several things we allow by in our rules. But yeah, so you're kind of, it's, it's a, what do we call it, a buyer market? They did one in Ohio. Well, right now, we have, yeah, used to be, used to be, it was back when fertilizer was high, it was moving. It's like you would have to hunt, you would have to bid to get it. Now, there's places, it depends on where you are in the state. There's places where it's, you know, they give it away. If you will take it, it's yours. But it's got to be by broker, it's not legal. Okay. It's got to be done by brokers. Question in the back. Just a quick question. It doesn't sound like it, but so, you know, with your, your brooder houses and stuff with turkeys, they, most of it's bedding. Um, I know in Pennsylvania, the broilers, a lot of them, when they were going, like when they started to go, uh, no antibiotics ever, you know, antibiotic free, a lot of them were cycling out litter The main reason I well, we we have that is a problem with turkey brooder folks just because for disease control they're religious on that. In fact, the integrator puts in cash for bedding. The rest of the poultry business is suffering because price and availability of traditional bedding sources. And the reason why is we heat germany. Pulp prices are are elevated compared to what they used to be. Have been for years. Why? Because we literally will ch we'll chip an entire stand, pelletize it, put it on a barge, it goes to Germany, goes to Italy, goes to Scandinavia. And so our poultry folks are, can't get their bedding because they're competing with uh, basically fuel for homes and boilers because we're shipping it to Europe. So they can say they're green, by the way. So we actually are kind of, that, that's the other big problem hurting us. But we have done stuff like that in the past, but right now I don't want anybody to know. <coughs> Take a look, Jim. Bring it in there. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.